ChargingPoint.com has come here to Millbrook, the motor industry's vast private testing ground, to have a thrilling drive in the experimental, pure electric Rolls Royce. We asked project manager David Hall about the thinking behind this amazing car. So, if we're never actually going to see a production version, um, is this really about seeing how customers react to different power trains? Yeah, that's, that's the main reason. Um, Rolls-Royce is 105 years old now, and we've had 100 years of making 6-litre, 7-litre petrols, whether they're V8s or V12s, but that's, that's what we've done. We know Rolls-Royce, we want to be sustainable, we want to be here in another 100 years' time. And there's, you could say there's many countries worldwide, many cities that are already drafting legislation where high CO2 generating vehicles, whether it's a 1.6 petrol or a 3 litre petrol, those vehicles will be banned from some cities, mm -hmm. as they are with congestion charges today. So we know we have to move with the times and we need to have an alternative available for us. Um, and this is really one way of suggesting and looking at an alternative drivetrain. Okay, so this is purely electric. Uh, with purely electric there will be some compromises, namely the range. Um, that for some customers is, is acceptable. Some people think it's perfection. If you only do 20, 30 miles a day, if you live in the city of London, then that might be perfect for you. For others, they may see it as a, a, a huge compromise. They, they couldn't live with a mileage of less than 100 miles a day. So, yeah, we know there are compromises with it, but it's really about purely the electric drive, the way the motors work. Does it deliver the torque, the power, the smoothness that Rolls-Royce has come to sort of epitomize? Uh, so we're, we're starting with electric drive and then we'll we'll show it to our customers, we'll show it to obviously many journalists and we're looking for people's opinions of what what is appropriate for Rolls-Royce. What if they react negatively? What if they say, no, no, we want a big displacement petrol engine? Well, I mean, some of them already have done. Some, some say, hey, no, I like the sound of my V12. That for me is part of the car experience. And yeah, sure, we, we have to handle that and that, that'll all go into the, the melting pot and part of our decision-making process of, of what we do in the future. But likewise, yeah, other customers say, fantastic, I love it, it's electric. I, I, can, I only do 30 miles a day, I drive to the airport and get on my helicopter if I want to go any long distances. It, uh, it, it's not a problem, the, the sort of low mileage, low range. But yeah, it's, everyone's going to have different opinions. In London, we have some customers where it's not a problem. It may be in California, we don't know yet, but maybe it's a bigger problem over there because they do greater mileages. Yet in the Middle East or in uh, the Asia-Pacific region, there'll be yet another opinion. And that's really what this car's about. It's a tool for us to go and see our customers and talk to them and actually show them what an electric vehicle in a Rolls Royce would look like and feel like. Yeah, makes sense. <coughs> what about hydrogen fuel cell? Is, is there any work on, on that front? We haven't done anything specific with Rolls Royce with, with this vehicle. This is our first first prototype. <laughs> um, but being part of the BMW group, we obviously have access to a lot more than just petrol engine technologies. We, we have access to hydrogen and fuel cell, different hydrogen technologies. So that is always an opportunity, mm -hmm. but it's not something we're looking at specifically right now. Right. So nothing wrong with the performance. What do you think so far? <coughs> I think it's pretty remarkable, actually. 